Hello everyone, Farm Further here, and today I'm gonna do the video which was quite requested, and that's about packing. What I'm taking with me, how I pack things um, for the bike as well as myself. And I really didn't think I'm gonna make this video because I never thought it's gonna be really useful uh, for one really, really big reason, and that is that packing, especially personal things, in my opinion, is really, really personal. And one rule I have looking at it is if that item makes me happy, if I'm happy to use it, if I'm happy to carry it all the way to India and back and then, you know, enjoy it, then it's the right thing to take. It doesn't really matter if it's a carpet in my case, yes, or if it's a full set of chairs on a table on an Africa twin so overloaded that it could barely make it through the Bartang Valley um, of the guy I met. Or if it's a full set of the kitchen equipment which Steve had on his GS and could probably whip up a Michelin star restaurant in the middle of the nowhere. It made them happy to carry that and they never ever complained about the weight, about the volume or anything. Um, and I think that is really important. So in the first um, part, because it's a lot of stuff, I have made them um, a list of all the things I take and bloody hell, um, it's a lot of things. So what I want to do to, um, in here is go through things for the bike. I have a lot of tools and, and, and parts and things which I take um, for the bike. Um, and here with the motorcycle stuff, I have one simple rule. And that is pack, I'm packing for independence uh, when small little tiny things break. So if, let's say, my clutch cable uh, breaks, I need to be able to fix it. The same with the tires, the same with the battery, the same with other things. So here I'm looking at independence. And um, when, when something breaks of this kind, I really don't want to get stuck because it's usually a simple fix. Um, what I'm not looking for is to taking a spare engine or piston head or whatever because in that case, what I think is much more valuable is good planning. In a sense that if I know that I'm traveling 20,000 kilometers somewhere and um, by the end of it, I kind of know, okay, that's going to be, maybe I need to change the piston rings or something like that. I can plan that um, in terms of part shipments, in terms of shops, which will be there, garages and all that. Of course, something can happen in the middle, but for that, we maintain the bike, right? So we know this is getting worse, I can plan again. So um, you will see from the spare parts, it really is along these principles. And um, then another thing is what I really like to do with the tools and things which I have here on the table, is that I really, really want tr to try to put everything on the bike, meaning that if I take my luggage off and I ride to the middle of nowhere for fun, if something happens, I would still like to have most of that tools and equipment on the bike because then it gives me freedom of having fun over there but having uh, fully loaded over there. So that's what I aim in terms of principles of, of packing up. So I'm gonna change the camera and we will look into what I have here on a table and how I stuff it onto the Tenere. Well, this is roughly what is potentially on my bike, um, excluding this pack in here, which are spare parts and I'm gonna get to it. So let's start with the tools. Um, this is my uh, tool roll um, with all the different things. What I'm using is Vera Zico um, system, which basically is a screwdriver as well as a wrench with some bits in here, different sizes, everything for your bike effectively. So that is quite simple. What's um, interesting from this set is uh, we do have um, spoke wrench. Uh, I would recommend having that. And also what I would recommend is to have a T. Um, this is uh, 3 eighths to 1 quarter because my bits are 1 quarter. Now this is combined together with my trail stand to allow me 
for a little bit of the leverage. So that's important. Um, and also I need three eights for this thing, which is a 17. And here is a uh, homemade uh, front axle hex wrench. So that's in here. This is quite an unusual but important. Effectively, if you want to change your rear brake, brake pads, you need um, somehow to hammer the pins out and in. And this is what I use for that. Then we have some wrenches. We have a tweezers, that's important. Tiny wrenches and all that, um, a little bit bigger. Um, 40, I think this is T40. And that's about what's in the tool tube. What also goes are these little uh, things. One of them is really important. This is a seal mate for uh, cleaning up the seals on the forks. Uh, you can make one, uh, obviously, from some plastic, but I have that. And that all goes into that place. I have a set of spare fuses, some of other sizes than a normal, because I have some other electrical equipment. Um, really tiny zip ties. I have a lot of zip ties. This is a battery for my wheel pressure, tire pressure sensor. Um, here we have some O-rings and we have a spare hardware for the um, phone holder as well as a spare hardware for the foot pegs. They get loose, you need that. So that's it. One important thing which I carry with me is seals for the um, oil drain plug plus um, the circlips for the um, clutch lever. They tend to kind of fly off, so um, it's important to have that. Now, in this one, which also comes into the bike, is some set of bolts and things. When things break, and they kind of break miserably, like a bash plate or something, you want to have something, or pipes burst, or you need to put new pipes. So I have these. One really cool thing, so I mentioned in the intro um, clutch cable. We also have a throttle cables. So this is my set of cables and hardware to repair throttle and clutch cables, which usually comes in a set like this. And what you have is you have a thick clutch cable as well as thin throttle cables. These all are kind of screw on. Um, so they have made the ends for you and on the other hand uh, you actually use these um, screws so we have that in there then obviously we want some grease we want some electrical tape loctite um, also what i take is a chain um, connection link and what i can move now on to is the tire stuff and what I have here is, obviously on the bike, there's two tubes, the front and rear one. I can show you where I pack them. I have a little tiny compressor. This is, I don't know what the brand is, but it has been with me quite a while. Very easy, very simple. Uh, they tend to break after, let's say, 30,000 kilometers or something. So, I mean, this one has 20, so let's see how long it's actually going to last. Um, that is in luggage because I cannot put it on a bike. Now, in terms of tire irons, I would highly recommend the uh, Motion Pro Bead Breaker. I can change um, front and rear tire with this and take it off the bead. Uh, when we travel alone, um, there's not going to be possible to use your side stand to do this. So this works. I have been using it for many years. Um, what I have then is a um, 27 mil two tire spoon. I have also the really expensive Motion Pro aluminium one. This weight fraction of this thing. Now, unfortunately, you cannot comfortably fit it onto the swing arm. And what's worse, you cannot fit it onto the steering stem bolt. So you cannot use this to tighten the steering stem. And that one actually gets loose. This one, you can do both. So I'm taking this one with me. And then obviously we have this wonderful um, thing, which is our trail stand. I do have a video about it. Um, what it is, is just homemade two tubes. And because I don't have a center stand, 
I'm changing the tires front and rear with this one. Yes, it's possible on a Dinaric Rally I have changed the front one three times with this. No worry. Also, there is obviously patches and valve stems and valve caps and all that kind of things. Now what I want to move to is electrics. Um, I have two items. Now this is the OBD2 reader. I have also a video about it. Not necessary, but nice. And this is interesting thing. This is a capacitor. So I have a lithium battery and if that lithium battery dies, you screw it really. You cannot very easily recharge it. So what this, and I have a video about it, what this does is you take the battery out, you plug this instead of the battery and then you can push start the bike and it runs off this capacitor, not off the battery. It works, check out the video I have. What we have here is bunch of glues and um, these two are the most important so this is the steel metal um, putty so you kind of um, mix it in the hands and then you just use it as a plaster that works very well on the general rally we, we fix the bike with this this is usually more heavy due to stuff um, it can also be the JB weld which I used for a very long time as you can see <laughs> combination of the JB weld or the epoxy metal with this um, fiberglass um, reinforcement on a plastics, uh, it does absolutely amazing thing. Sugru for fixing, um, super glue, um, very useful for many things. Also the um, grips. Uh, this is kind of a glue which stays all the time flexible. So you can also fix tent with it, you can fix um, waterproofs, you can fix all these things with it. So, um, really cool stuff. Um, now, chain. In terms of chain, a toothbrush, and I use just engine oil. Um, now I bought here a chain loop, so I'm gonna take a chain loop. To be honest, in the desert, you don't really use chain loop anyway, so that's fine. Uh, spare cap. So these are the spare parts I actually take. These are the wheel bearing uh, dust caps and I would encourage everyone they may not know but nothing and they are really useful because when your Seals start to wear off the water and the grit goes into the wheel bearings and makes them go much faster So I would actually change these quite often. They are cheap. They weight nothing and take them with you Then I am this time taking uh, a brake pads um, the main reason is that my front brake pads are gone, so I'm going to probably end up in Tunisia without the brake pads, so I'm going to use them. Otherwise, if I would go for a really long ride, you can, you can get uh, brake pads on Amazon in India, all that kind of stuff. So I have a washable uh, Google, Google Attic filter, so this is the oil for the Google Attic filter. What's here is a little bit more intricate spare parts. And it really depends if I would go to India again, uh, which um, I, I took my set of bearings with me um, and it was actually really useful. Um, what I have here is a full set um, of uh, wheel bearings. I am not gonna take them now because I'm gonna be in Tunisia and, and Balkans and all that and you can get the bearings very easily. Now, this is only valid, this information, if you don't have anything special. So for example, for Honda, getting the bearing, the rear wheel bearing um, was a matter of 30 minutes on a bazaar, but getting the front, which was the KTM size, was actually shipping um, <laughs> from Europe to Kyrgyzstan. Uh, the same thing for the rear suspension linkage. Now, the rear suspension linkage doesn't really break uh, immediately and it takes quite some time. The problem with the linkage is the bearing size. Uh, so for example in India they did have the bearings but they were a little bit wider. So it tells you again you can always budget um, around the world. Again if we're gonna change um, the oil filter that's probably something about planning better than just taking the thing. This was my oil. the same for the clutch although so clutch is very light this is really really light this is my old clutch um, you can see these are burned um, 
what happens is that if you have a bike which is prone to burning the clutches, or KTMs to be honest, um, then um, maybe it would be a good idea to take a set. What I did is I changed the clutch at the moment, um, right now, so I probably have about 40k, 40 Ks on it, um, and it's gonna be healthy unless I screw up something really badly. And then it's gonna be DHL, you know. And that's the principle we were talking about, you know. I cannot even change a clutch without draining all the fluid and all that everything on a Tenere. So um, not taking that one with me. I'm gonna take the brake lever. Um, it is um, something which I tend to break. And uh, I'm not gonna take clutch uh, and the brake lever because I have a bark busters and they protect them quite well. Uh, this is also useful. This is 3M double-sided tape. Um, I take a piece with that uh, with me as well. So that's it. As I said, I really like to have most of the things on the bike. So gloves are stuffed in here. The capacitor comes in there. The electronic um, OBD is stuffed in here behind this relay. The um, steel uh, glue and everything comes in here. The tool tube, well, the tool roll comes in here like this. Um, it's actually working reasonably well. Um, it is a little bit more difficult to close the seat, but it works, so no issues. This is my um, uh, tire stuff uh, that fits in here, and in there goes the glues and everything else like this. Again, this is a little bit pain in the butt to close, um, but it works. Now, there is a saw. There is a rear tube. I have a set of zip ties stuffed in here that comes in there. There is a seat. Now, there's going to be one compartment on the Turkana, which is going to be the liquids and all that kind of stuff. This is set of the heavy duty zip ties. They go all the way from the fork to the top of the fork um, over there. So that's it. Um, there is a rope to tow people and behind this compartment you can actually fit a tube. So here, here behind is a tube in there. I almost forgot to mention a uh, secondary clutch cable is already routed and ready to be swapped in case something happens. And in here I managed to route it in such a way that it's held with the zip ties and it's actually sealed so no, no water, no dirt can go in. And I think that's it.